live from Washington, D.C. Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Hey, welcome to the broadcast, everyone. We're thrilled our television audience is here. Let me tell you what we've got. We want to support our men and women serving in the military, and I know this network sure has, and we appreciate that so much. And we at the ACLJ have a unit inside the ACLJ dedicated to working with men and women serving in the military and, and developing these issues that affect the military. And it, we've got a big one. Sergeant Martlin. Now, you may not know him. He's not a household world, and I think that's frankly part of the problem. Sergeant Charles Martlin is a decorated military hero, a Green Beret, served valiantly in Afghanistan. Was in an outpost, a military outpost, a United States military outpost in Afghanistan. And he and a couple of his other members of the Green Berets were there and witnessed and saw an Afghan commander, an Afghan commander approved by, that was on the base, sexually abusing a young boy. And Sergeant Martlin went in to stop it, remove the commander off the base reported what the commander had done to this young boy. And you know who's being reprimanded? Sergeant Martland. And that's not the way it's supposed to work in the United States of America. We protect children, especially on U.S. soil or at a U.S. military base. This was an Afghan commander that was authorized to be on the base but was abusing this child. Some will say that was, some argue, well, that was the culture over there. You know what? That's not the culture anywhere. That violates every international norm and every international human rights that all of these governments have signed on to. Jordan, let's let's talk about the practicalities on the ground of what we're going to have to do to succeed in this now very narrow window of appeal that's left. Um, this is this is a major effort here. We've got to help uh, Congressman Hunter build a lot of congressional support. He speaks, uh, obviously, he's got a lot of uh, uh, influence when it comes to issues involving our armed forces and so and working with uh, members of the House, members of the United States Senate, a bipartisan effort. That starts with your grassroots engagement today as you're listening to this broadcast, getting involved, whether it's uh, online at ACLJ.org or by phone at 877-989-2255. We need you to take that extra step of grassroots engagement. We know in the past, this is how you get a positive result in these situations. It comes ultimately down to impacting those who can make these decisions very easy. They can get involved and put a halt to this. You can go all the way to the White House. We need your help today. All right, folks, go to aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255 and add your name. It's really that simple. Tim's calling from uh, South Carolina. Hi, Tim. Uh, I'd just like to know why Obama does not jump into the fray as fast as he does to protect our citizens and our men and women of the military, as fast as he does for all the terrorists, the illegals. Um, yeah, so here, here's why right now it's not getting the attention that it needs to get. I mean, that's just, I, that's, just, that's, just, that's just the truth. It's not getting the attention it needs to get. So we've got a big job here, uh, and that is, Tim, we've got to get this to get attention. And that's why we've got all of our resources. That's why we're, we're going to run this on our regular television broadcast as well. We've got to get attention to this. It's, it's, it is that critical. Without the attention, Jordan, you know, Congressman Hunter can't do this by himself. No, it, we need that grassroots outcry, the support to, to really swell across the country. It needs to be those who, uh, of course, the, we know we have many listeners of this broadcast who have family members who, who are veterans themselves, who have family members who are currently serving. And this is a time for you to really take a stand. It should not be a partisan issue. It's not a Republican or Democrat issue. At this point, at this stage, we know that we need to get the attention of more of our leaders in yep. government. And this is our opportunity to do so. All right, Morgan's calling from Portland, Connecticut, on uh, line four. Hi, Morgan. Hi, Jay. How are you? Hey, good. Um, you know, I'm a veteran, and my husband's a retired Navy vet. Well, thank you both and, for your uh, service. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, from the day that we enter boot camp, we're taught to have moral character. We're taught to have respect and honor. Yep. And I feel like, you know, this guy is he's being persecuted for what we were all taught from day one. 
Right. And I'm sure he entered the military actually having this character. Because you know what? These people don't just go into the military because they want the money. God knows it's not for the money, you know? So they go in for a purpose, and that's to serve, and it's to protect the children, our families, right. our wives and everything else, and our husbands and everything. And you know what? When I, I sit here and I see an innocent child, you know, right. just being abused, and then— On a military base controlled by the United States. On a military States. base. That is, that is like American— American soil considered. Exactly. And I'm so, sorry, but you know what? It, it didn't even matter if it wasn't American soil. I understand if that's but the it is. culture or whatever. It, I mean, technically, it's under our control. So, Skip, I mean, Morgan brings on, thank you, Morgan, and your family for your service. Skip, she brings up a really important point here, and that is what do you expect a trained soldier to do? Look the well, other any, way? Yeah. Any trained soldier who's an honorable individual, and Sergeant Martland definitely was, would take exactly the action he did. He stopped the abuse of the child, he confronted the abuser and tossed the abuser off the installation, and then it was reported up, and then he was reprimanded, relieved, and removed from that position. That's where the mistake happened, and that's where the fault should lie, and the military should be trying to figure out who had such faulty judgment to react that way and to punish the person who was right, to punish, to make him the the uh, the criminal in this activity, yeah. not the one who actually perpetrated the crime. Here's what I need everybody to do. We've got 40 seconds before our break. Everyone that is listening to me, no matter how you're listening, you go to aclj.org right now or you call us at one 989 2255 Let's put the number on the screen here for everybody, please. aclj.org or one 989 2255 And you need to sign this petition for Sergeant Martland aclj.org that's aclj.org or 1-877-989-2255 i want to get it to 250,000. we'll talk to you in a few moments a bad situation just got worse for a green beret war hero who defended a child from sexual assault. The U.S. Army has been threatening to kick out Sergeant Charles Martland, and now a top Army command is recommending just that. In Afghanistan, children, young boys and girls, are being sexually abused, and Sergeant Martland said, quote, we felt a moral obligation to act. For his action, he faces expulsion from the Army. There's still time before a final decision is made. The American Center for Law and Justice is working with Congress and urging the Secretary of Defense to stop this moral outrage and reinstate this brave Green Beret. The U.S. military has a moral obligation to stop child abuse on our bases and exonerate Sergeant Martland for defending a child from assault. Add your name to our petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. So let me give everybody an update uh, if you're just joining us or you're hearing this uh, program taped late or maybe our friends on KKLA, you hear the this portion of the broadcast at 6 o'clock. Let me tell you what's happened. Sergeant Martland, a decorated Green Beret, served in Afghanistan with honor and distinction, ends up in a situation where he witnesses firsthand with other Marines, uh, other Green Berets rather, he witnesses firsthand an abuse by an Afghan commander on the base and an outpost against a young boy. And he intervenes, pulls them apart, takes the Afghan commander off the base. For that, Sergeant Martlin is being removed from the military under this reorganization plan of the military and shrinking of the military. This is someone served with honor and distinction. Now, Skip, we, we, we've hit two levels of appeal here without success. So if we go up one level now. This one, you were just talking during the break. This is much more complicated. It is more complicated. The- we have to remember, I mean, these people are just going through the numbers. They have their guidance, and they're looking at records. So they, they're not looking at the whole context. It's the political leaders, yep. the, the people who are the final decision makers who need to look at this in context. And we need to understand that one of the reasons that they acted was because the whole purpose of being over there was to win the hearts and minds of the people, and the people were viewing this type of treatment as being worse than our enemies. Yeah. So they had to stop it, and they did stop it. Jordan, let me ask you this, because we talked about this also during the breaks. So our friends on Facebook and Periscope have heard it, but most of our audience has not. We Duncan Hunter, the congressman, is, is running lead on this, but we've got to get much broader-based Republican-Democrat congressional support here to, to move this. 
That's right. In the House, in the Senate, we need this from from every every potential member of Congress. The more this is one of those situations where it's going to take that kind of pressure to get a positive outcome. And, and that will start with the grassroots movement right here on this broadcast today. All right, folks, again, if you want to help, ACLJ.org or 877-989-2255. Christopher is calling from Oklahoma on line six. Christopher, welcome to the broadcast. You're on the air. Yes, sir. How are you today? Good, sir. Uh, I'm a Army infantry veteran. I did two combat tours to Iraq. Thank you for your service. Thank you. We were told, both my deployments, if we witnessed a sexual assault, doesn't matter if it's on man, woman, or child, we were to stop it however we could. And that is the order that makes sense, Chris. And 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 Skip, you you served in the military a long time uh, as as an officer in the military, and that would to me just make sense. If you see it, you stop it. That's exactly right. I mean, it, uh, sexual assault violates the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It violates international law, and it and I'm sure it violated Iraqi law. So you are just acting in accordance with law when you stop that type of conduct. You know, somebody on, on Periscope just said, they do. what do they do, expect our military to look the other way? Apparently somebody does. So, so Skip, how then did, has this happened? I mean, I know this, they're downsizing the military. And, and but to me, this is exactly what we write about in our book, Undemocratic. This is the bureaucracy not real, realizing, or maybe intentionally doing this, but the bureaucracy taking control of the situation rather than realizing this is a decorated soldier that's really being harmed by this. Absolutely. In fact, this whole issue in Afghanistan, there were um, other people uh, that report Marines and Army people who report this type of conduct going on and reported that they had been told they could not intervene, which means someone in the U.S. chain of command had promulgated a policy and uh, up higher up that said that they could not intervene. And that is an unlawful order. And that's the person or those are the people that the Department of Defense should be looking for. And they're the ones who should be ejected, not someone who acted honorably. All right. So we're basically at the final le- uh final stage of appeal for Sergeant Martland's case, uh, Skip. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. It'll probably go from here to the final approval authority who's either going to approve it or disapprove it, and it's more than likely he's going to approve it unless there's a great deal of pressure from outside. We've got to get the outside pressure really going here, folks, and we're working on that. Let's take Charlie, who's calling from Odessa, Florida, also a Marine veteran. Charlie, thank you for your service to the country. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, Charlie the plumber from sunny odessa florida yes sir. i'm a marine corps veteran and you know i love my country and uh the sergeant should be given a commendation he should be given a medal he should be given a promotion he was only doing the right thing hey if this would have been if i would know there was a bunch of marines and we saw him raping this little boy which yeah. uh that, that's in their culture you know what there would have been no problem with uh that guy were leaving leaving that place alive. You know, all he did, you know, Charlie, this is what so this is what to me is so frustrating about this case. He separated them and removed him off the base. And Jordan, that should be he should be getting like Charlie said, he should be getting commendations for that. Yeah. I mean you can imagine how this could escalate to a much more oh, yeah. difficult situation. Instead, though, using his training and using his knowledge and I, I think being as, as sensitive as possible to the situation especially after the family asked them to intervene, uh, he got involved and removed the individual. Could it have gotten a little rough? Yes, but it didn't escalate to a to a really difficult situation where someone was seriously injured and, and, or, and hurt in the process. And, and there's no indication that this, this uh, in any way uh, hampered our efforts in Afghanistan either. Right, absolutely, positively not. All right, Donnie's calling on line five from Washington, D.C. Hi, Donnie, welcome to the broadcast. You're on the air. Hi, I absolutely agree with the last caller. I think the surgeon should be awarded. Right. I mean, I think the policy makes absolute no sense where you just report upwards and something might be done and probably will not be done after the action has already taken place. You're, yeah, and so the damage what, what, you're talking done. about the, the when they when the commander said report up the up the chain. Do we have that sound bite? Let's go ahead. Let me play it for everybody so we know what Donnie's talking about. Here's what was said. The military's policy when a service member becomes aware of an instance of abuse. What I said in a press release a week or so ago was that there is no policy that says disregard that. What our policy has said since 2011 is that, you know, you have to report instances of sexual abuse by the Afghan security forces up your chain of command. And so uh, that's what I expect of all of our men and women serving in Afghanistan to be able to do. This was, by the way, questioned by Senator Gilderbrand, who's a Democratic senator from New York. Skip, what about this? Uh, th- this is obviously the defense on the other side. Report up the chain. 
Well, I'm sure there was a report up the chain. I mean, he handled it, and then he reported up the chain. Otherwise, why would they have known to reprimand him? So uh, the issue is it was probably reported up both chains, the American chain and the Afghan uh, official who was offended probably complained. But the but the issue was he handled the problem as it should have been handled, and then it went up our chain because our military leaders were aware of it. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back more of your comments. But, folks, as I've been saying, we need your help on this in a big way. ACLJ.org or one 989 2255 We want to make sure that Sergeant Martlin is protected. Now, right now on our petition, we have 181,000 signatures. We want to get up to 250,000. So I need everybody to go to ACE right now. If you're listening to this broadcast, no matter how you're seeing it or listening to it, ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. I want you to take direct action on this. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. And it's critical, critical that we hear from you. And again, folks, if you want to understand how this stuff happens, get our book, the paperback release of our book, Undemocratic, because this book talks about the bureaucracy taking our liberties. And for Sergeant Martland, that's exactly what happened. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Pre-order it today. We encourage you to do it. We'll be back with more in a moment. A bad situation just got worse for a Green Beret war hero who defended a child from sexual assault. The U.S. Army has been threatening to kick out Sergeant Charles Martland, and now a top Army command is recommending just that. In Afghanistan, children, young boys and girls, are being sexually abused, and Sergeant Martland said, quote, we felt a moral obligation to act. For his action, he faces expulsion from the Army. There's still time before a final decision is made. The American Center for Law and Justice is working with Congress and urging the Secretary of Defense to stop this moral outrage and reinstate this brave Green Beret. The U.S. military has a moral obligation to stop child abuse on our bases and exonerate Sergeant Martland for defending a child from assault. Add your name to our petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. I want to go right to the phones. We had a lot of calls. Uh, some of you've been waiting for a while here. Dell's calling from Florence, Arizona, on line five. Hi, Dell. How are you? Yes, sir. Good. I just have a comment and a question. Sure. We we join the military, regardless of what branch it is. We 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 join it. We are trained. We were taught how to take care of people, protect people, and go yep. on from there. But then when we do it, our commander-in-chief and uh, other parties, they don't back us up. We're over here to protect America right? and, and do what's, what we're trained to do. But when we do, then they turn around and it's like they're talking on both That's sides. What the, I mouth. mean, look, first of all, Dell, thank you for your service. But, I mean, Skip, I mean, militarily, this is what it looks like. It looks like, you know, you got a, a soldier doing an honorable thing, and he's, he's got great reviews from his peers fellow soldier saying he's the kind of person we want to keep in the military and he's being penalized because he did the right thing. Absolutely. Loyalty is a two way street. You have, you need to be loyal to your commanders and they need to be loyal to you. And what we see missing in this piece is the loyalty down to a subordinate who was doing the right thing. He should be being defended right now by his superiors to say he did the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And there's no reason to punish him. And yet those very same leaders uh, reprimanded him and removed him from his position. I'm going to go ahead and take another phone call here. Let's go to Jacob calling from Minnesota online too. Hi, Jacob. I love watching you on Facebook. Oh, great. Um, I put you on Facebook on my phone and I listen to you while I'm working. Great. (laughs) But anyways, um, you know, I haven't been like full active duty like a lot of these other gentlemen and women that have called in. Yep. Army is rude, you know. But like they said, not, we are uh, any soldier, marine, seaman, airman. It's not it's not just a matter of training, but uniform code. We are required to step in and defend those who cannot defend themselves. Well, that's that's precisely what should have happened here. And I want to quickly go to Jordan, and then a friend of ours has called in, which is great, uh, Colonel Wes Smith. So I want to get to, to, to Wes in a moment here. But let me, Jordan, quickly here. 
the problem that we have, and Jacob is raising this, they're trained to do one thing, but we've got a political problem here. I mean, the, the, this is a political problem right now. That's right. I mean, you're, you're basically hearing from our leaders in, in, in the military and in, in that bureaucracy that you can't step in. And so it's, it kind of goes against the training that you need to step in when something wrong is happening, especially when you're on a yep. territory, it's happening on your own base. So we are fortunate to have a good friend of ours. Colonel West Smith uh, is joining us retired. Also served in the uh, army as chaplain and served in Dover for the uh, killed in action. He knows the military well, served and in, been in, in harm's way a number of times, but also happened to have served in the Human Resources Command, which is the organization right now that's recommended that this Green Beret uh, be uh, thrown out of his uh, service. Wes, tell us, give me your reaction to this first as someone that served as a distinguished career, career in the military. What's your reaction to this is? Well, you know, the Army, in spite of all of its strengths and good things, uh, is a, a bureaucracy when all is said and done. And I think uh, the, the, the bureaucracy is what's caught up with this young soldier. Yeah. You know, I was reading over some of the regulations today, and the qualitative management program, you know, by Army regulation, it says it's supposed to enhance the quality of the career enlisted force and to discontinue unproductive soldiers. But then when you read down, unproductive has nothing to do with how well they do their job. It's whether or not they have any negative material in their file, an Article 15, a letter of reprimand, yeah. a bad efficiency report. And, uh, of course, this soldier has two of those things. But it's anything that might negatively affect promotion. And so they're looking strictly at the paperwork, and, and they're not looking at the larger picture of this soldier's stellar career and all the, the money that went into yep. training him. And, again, it's a bureaucratic kind of thing. You know, Skip, I said, I said, actually, Wes, before you came on, I actually said that, uh, that this was the bureaucracy in action. And Skip, there, there's a lot. And, but we've got to, we, our job now is to peel that back. Yes. Absolutely. The, the other thing is, even after this incident, they allowed him to reenlist, yeah. which says that they didn't recognize this as being of such significance mm -hmm. that uh, he could not serve properly. So what they're doing now is using this as a mark as they try to reduce the size of the force. Right. There are only three ways that, that a QMP can, can actually be originated. You know, it can come from, from the uh, general officer in his command. The commander of HRC can also initiate it. And, uh, and then the G1 of the Army. And uh, somewhere or another, after he was allowed to reenlist, somewhere someone mm. uh, decided to do this. And, and uh, I don't understand that because no. uh, normally you would not let a guy reenlist. Whenever you would do something this serious, and he did get a general letter of reprimand, when that happens, you also get a bar to reenlistment. And they did not do nope. that to him. And then at this late date, they're coming back around to it. Yeah, so what you've got now, Jordan, it sounds like to me, legally, we're hearing, you know, we, we, I'm glad we've got uh, uh, Skip and West dealing with it from the how the Army works side, but legally, this post hoc justification is not legal. I mean, we know that. You can't retroactively do things like this. No, and that's right. So this whole, this whole program and how this has been uh, prosecuted against Sergeant Marlin, if you will, uh, is just, it's backwards. It's not right. Uh, he was allowed to continue on. This dates back again to 2011. And so yep. he's been allowed to continue serving. There's been extensions in uh, these uh, hearings. And then now, of course, that we're at this very close to the final stage, and it's when people need to begin speaking out. All right. Sally's calling from Illinois on line three. She's the mother of a soldier. Sally, thank you for your family service. Thank you. <laughs> It's an honor to talk to you today. Sure. You open avenues to uh, being able to respond to so many issues, and I get to put my name on it, and I'm Great. so excited about that. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, yeah, my son has been in 17 years, and if there's anything I'm passionate about, it's our military sure. and our soldiers. And um, I, this is so outrageous. I can't believe it. Um, I would expect that my son and any of his friends would have done the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's honorable about our military, is we are good, upstanding people. We are kind, we are generous, we look out for the um, yeah. the light of heart and, you know, children. And I wouldn't expect anything else but that one of our soldiers yeah. 
but do this exact same thing. Well, Sally, look, we, we hear the, your, the emotion in your voice as a mother of a soldier that's serving our country currently. And I want to go to, to Colonel Smith with this because Wes served as yes. a chaplain. And um, this is hard. I mean, we're, Wes, we're getting a lot of calls from military that are just really upset about this. Right. Well, I reached out to some of my contacts and and special forces and uh, to a person. uh, They are totally supportive uh, of Sergeant Martland. And they're they're just really upset that this is going on. I mean, he was a stellar individual, his teammates, his group commander. Everybody believes in him. And yet this has gone to echelons, you know, above that. And the interesting thing about it, Jay, is that, you know, if you read the Army regulations and human resources commands, their policies, uh, this is not supposed to be used as a force management tool. Right. You know, the goal of the administration is to reduce the Army to 450,000 soldiers. And yet, but by regulation, you use other formulas to reduce the force. But in my heart, I think they are using the, the QMP as a force management tool to try to get down to the $450,000 yep. uh, level. I mean, last year alone, 880 people were put out of the Army under this same program that Sergeant Martin is going through. Mm. Jordan, let me ask you this because Wes raised this so it skipped. So we've got the inspector general that's been talking with Congressman, our friend Congressman Duncan Hunter, and he said exactly what Wes said. Wes has confirmed with his colleagues that Sergeant Martin's uh, peers and co- commanders consider him, ex- him an exemplary soldier. And we've got to take that inspector general information with Congressman Hunter and build out the support from there. Absolutely. That's where we that's where we this is a starting point today on this broadcast. We've informed about it before, but this is a time we can really we've got to take action because uh, they're starting to move in the in the armed forces. The time is running out for Sergeant Martlin. We as as a combined force of folks, a grassroots army of such uh, we can again from across the country. We've heard from so many veterans and those who serve and families uh, of those who are serving our country. This is your opportunity to take a stand. All right, we're out of time, but folks, let me tell you what we want you to do. Taking action is critical. We have about 200,000 signatures. If I add the phone calls to it, I want to get to 250,000 because we've got to get, as we've talked about on this broadcast, more members of Congress engaged in this issue. So if you would join us in this fight, go to ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. ACLJ.org or 1-877-989-2255. Sign on to this fight. Stand with us. As we stand for this sergeant again, the easiest way, ACLJ.org, or you could call 1-877-989-2255. A bad situation just got worse for a Green Beret war hero who defended a child from sexual assault. The U.S. Army has been threatening to kick out Sergeant Charles Martland, and now a top Army command is recommending just that. In Afghanistan, children, young boys and girls, are being sexually abused, and Sergeant Martland said, quote, we felt a moral obligation to act. For his action, he faces expulsion from the Army. There's still time before a final decision is made. The American Center for Law and Justice is working with Congress and urging the Secretary of Defense to stop this moral outrage and reinstate this brave Green Beret. The U.S. military has a moral obligation to stop child abuse on our bases and exonerate Sergeant Martland for defending a child from assault. Add your name to our petition right now. Call 1-877-989-2255. That's 1-877-989-2255. Or add your name online, aclj.org. 